Hi, I'm Kat and today we are talking about true crime. I also have a word in Romanian for you and I will also be doing my makeup at the same time. So let's start with the word for today. Tata. Ta -ta. Tata. Well done guys, you just said father. In today's case, we finally have a happy ending but unfortunately the story is just horrible it wouldn't be a true crime case otherwise so even though i don't have many details and i have very limited photos in fact i think i only have one the details i do have are completely horrific but keep in mind that everything i'm going to say is alleged so because this video is a shorter video than what i usually do i already have my foundation on uh, because I'm uh, afraid we are going to run out of time if I do everything on screen. So, 50-year-old John Edward Kraft lives on Tollgate Run in Waynesburg, which is about an hour south of Pittsburgh, in Greene County, Pennsylvania, the U.S., with his children, his 6-year-old daughter, his 8-year-old son, and also their stepmother. We don't know exactly how many children there are in total, if there are only two children or more than two. However, the whereabouts of the children's biological mother is unknown. For a reason unknown to us, Children's Services became involved with the family in September of this year, 2022, when a social worker reported to police that the six-year-old girl was covered in severe bruising on her body and face. They were the ones investigating this at first, but because of the severity of the case, on October 19, 2022, they contacted Pennsylvania State Police. So the police got involved and they actually started an investigation. The investigators interviewed the girl and her siblings in October and they learned some really, really disturbing facts. The girl's sibling or siblings said that their father John was physically and emotionally abusive to the six-year-old girl and it seems that it was only her being abused and not the other siblings. According to the siblings, John allegedly buried his six-year-old daughter alive in a hole that he dug up in the yard of their home which left her smelling like sewage when she got out of that hole. To confirm this story, the police of course also spoke with the six-year-old girl and she did say that yes, her own father would bury her in the yard when he believed that she was lying or misbehaving as a punishment. And he didn't do it just once, he repeatedly buried her alive in that hole. He would use a shovel to dig the hole before covering her with mud and dirt. In addition to being buried alive, the girl said that her father would often whip her with a belt and beat her with his arm which has a metal plate implanted inside of it from him having had surgery previously. The girl also said that John would leave her in the hole in the yard until she told the truth and she would come out of the ground dirty and like I said smelling of sewage. Her siblings reported that John would also very often choke her to the point where she lost consciousness. The girl's stepmother allegedly helped her on one occasion bathing her after she was buried alive. The injuries covering the girl's body were seen to be in various stages of healing suggesting that there was ongoing physical abuse happening. Pictures provided to police showed that the six-year-old girl had severe bruising on her face, arms and buttocks. Allegedly, the girl was beaten brutally, she had bruises all over her body, she was choked to the point that she had passed out, she was thrown in the hole in the yard overnight, she was left there, her head was slammed off the wall, and she was also slammed off the floor. Green County District Attorney David Russo said that this is a barbaric situation. He told the KDKA TV that the circumstances of the case amounted to the one of the worst child case abuse he'd ever seen. The charges are horrific. A six-year-old allegedly buried alive by her father. And we're learning more tonight about a startling abuse case in Waynesburg. Erica Stanish is live with the latest from police. Erica. 
Yeah, according to paperwork, the child's father, John Kraft, would bury his daughter in a hole outside when he thought that she was lying to him. He's now behind bars with the DA promising that he will be prosecuted, prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. This is a barbaric situation. Uh, and my office will not tolerate child abuse in this county. A Green County man behind bars facing child abuse charges after police say he assaulted his six-year-old daughter. According to a criminal complaint, the victim stated to a CYS worker that her father, 50-year-old John Kraft, would hit her with his hands, belt, and arm, which had a metal plate inside. Her older brother also reporting to CYS, he witnessed Kraft bury his sister in the yard on one occasion, leaving her outside in the free freezing cold all night. The allegations are that this child was beaten brutally, that the child had bruises all over her body, that she was choked and to the point that she had passed out. She was buried in a hole uh, as punishment. Uh, she was thrown in a hole overnight. Um, her head was slammed off the wall and slammed off the floor. Paperwork says the child reported to CYS Kraft did this as punishment when he thought she was lying. Police say the child's stepmother intervened at least once when Kraft was assaulting the six-year-old and gave her a bath one night after she was buried alive. The district attorney calling it one of the worst child abuse cases he's seen. We will not tolerate it in our county, and this individual will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. You know, our children deserve better than this. John Edward Kraft was arrested on 21st of October 2022. He has 15 charges filed against him, including nine felonies with multiple counts for aggravated assault, strangulation, endangering the welfare of children, false imprisonment of a minor, and unlawful restraint of a minor, as well as six misdemeanors for simple assault and reckless endangerment. Following during John's arrest, the six-year-old victim and her sibling or siblings were moved into foster care and the Pennsylvania State Police took over control of the investigation. John is currently being held at the Greene County Jail. District Judge Lee Watson set his bond at $125,000 but it seems that according to court records he was unable to post bail so he remains in jail. He is set to appear in court on November the 7th. District Attorney Russo said in an email statement to Oxygen.com quote I would like to commend the Pennsylvania State Police on their swift and diligent efforts in their investigation and bringing this case to my immediate attention. The allegations against the defendant are barbaric and horrific and the first degree felony charges are appropriate. No child deserves to be treated this way and my office will concentrate our efforts with the Pennsylvania State Police to assure this investigation is fully completed and prepared for prosecution. My office has always taken a strong stance on crimes against children. I will be prosecuting this case myself to bring justice for the victim and do everything in my power to protect the children of our community. We will not tolerate child abuse in our county and this case will be prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law. The child was removed from the home and is currently in a safe place." End of quote. Neighbors who lived near the family were really, really concerned after hearing what happened. John seemed okay, just like, you know, a normal man. One of the neighbors, James Fawner, said that he saw the kids and they all seemed really nice and he would never think something like this could have been happening and he is really questioning why was it a six-year-old girl. But here is the kicker, right? As it turns out, potential child abuse has been reported before on numerous occasions to children's services, but guess what? Like usual, nobody did anything until eventually, as we know now, they did. Finally, on this occasion, they did. The house that John lived in with the kids was actually a rented house. The landlord, Larissa Fawner, says that she tried to contact social services several times, but nothing was really done. I'm not sure if she's in any way connected to the neighbor, James Fawner, who saw the kids and, uh, you know, uh, he thought that the kids seemed really nice. In an interview with the outlet, the landlady described the awful things that she witnessed in that home. She feels really sad for the kids because she believes that a lot of people had failed them. She would always check up on the kids. She would bring them food, clothing, toys, 
presence and on one particular occasion before she got to the house she could hear all of them inside and she could also hear John yelling at the children and they were crying and she heard something that sounded like John hitting the children. She also noticed cigarette burns on both the boy and the girl. She called social services many times and left many voicemails but she never heard back from anyone from social services. Larissa described the guilt that she feels surrounding the whole situation. Quote, it makes me feel disgusted and sad for the kids because I feel like a lot of different people fail them and that if someone would have stepped in sooner or if someone maybe would have taken reports a little serious, it could have been avoided." End of quote. Local father remains in jail tonight after police say he buried his daughter alive in their backyard. We first brought you this story on Monday after police arrested John Kraft. Tonight, Erica Stanish is in Greene County talking with those who know Kraft and his kids. And they say they reported him to child youth services in the past. Erica, what else did they tell you? Yeah, I'm told by the owners of the rental property that Kraft lives in that there have been several instances where they saw signs of abuse and reported it, but they say their calls went unanswered. It makes me feel disgusted and sad for the kids because I feel like a lot of pe different people failed them. A father in prison tonight accused of abusing his six-year-old daughter. According to paperwork, police say John Kraft buried the child in the yard as punishment when he thought she was lying. Our cameras getting an up-close look Wednesday, finding what appears to be a hole in the backyard covered in mud. It really breaks my heart because she's such a sweet little girl and it's sad. We knocked on Kraft's door where the children's stepmother still resides. She didn't answer and so far she hasn't been charged. But the owners of the rental property say it's hard to believe she wasn't You were in the home so there had to have been something that you saw. Larissa Fawner says the couple has lived in the home on Tollgate Run Road for about three years and says she's reported to CYS multiple times every year when she saw signs of abuse by Kraft, including when his daughter was covered in bruises. One specific incident was I saw cigarette burns on the kids. I could hear them inside and I could hear John yelling at the kids and the kids crying and what sounded like him hitting them. She says despite multiple reports to CYS, her calls went unanswered. I feel like a lot of people failed them and that even maybe myself, I feel like I could have done more. But when I saw something, I said something and it was out of my hands at that point. Now, I reached out to CYS for comment to see if they had received any reports of abuse in the past. They got back to me and said that they cannot comment on any ongoing investigation. Now, I also asked the district attorney here, and he said this case still remains under investigation. And unfortunately, this is all that I have for you in today's case. And honestly, I'm also left with the same question that the neighbor, James, is left with. Why the six-year-old girl? I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm extremely grateful that the other siblings were not abused as well, but I have to wonder, why was it her? There were no reports anywhere to suggest there was any sign of abuse of the other children or the other child, nor did they report any on themselves, apart from, you know, what the landlady said that she heard. So if only the girl was abused, is it because the other siblings were older and they could have reported abuse if it happened to them? We do know that one of the siblings is older than the six-year-old, but was this the reason? Or could it potentially be that because she is the only girl out of the children? I mean, what this man did is just beyond cruel, digging a hole in your yard and burying your six-year-old overnight in there. Can you just imagine how terrifying it must have been for this little girl? And beating her with his metal implanted arm, fully knowing it will be even more painful for when he does it. This is, this is torture, plain and simple torture and I am honestly so thankful that this was discovered when it was because I am certain that if it wouldn't be 
John Edward Kraft would at some point in the future be arrested for murder. The signs are there. He would, he would definitely have killed her, in my opinion. But thankfully, she is okay and her siblings are okay. But they will all need a lot of therapy after all of this. And I really hope he's not going to get three years in prison and then be released. But honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. I just hope that he never gets to see the children again. Also, I am really happy that finally Children's Services saved this child, although they could have done it much sooner. I'm looking forward to the trial to see what else comes out because I honestly have so many questions and right now, I barely have any answers. With this, I'm going to end today's video. Please let me know what do you guys think about the case in the comment section down below. Also, if you are interested in any of the makeup that I used in today's video, all of the products are linked in the description below under this video. And I also do take case suggestions. So if there is any case in particular you want me to look at, just leave uh, any details that you have in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!